Thank you very much. Uh, online master of ceremony. Your Excellency, the President Advocate Nelson Chamisa in absentia, the leadership of the citizens' movement, fellow Zimbabweans, Africans, and the world at large. My name is Comrade Ostalos. I'm the national daily spokesperson of the alternative and government in waiting in Zimbabwe, the Citizens' Coalition for Change as led by Advocate Nelson Chamisa. Today, the alternative movement brings you an alternative Twitter space for fellow Zimbabweans and African titled Voter Registration Bliss, Voices of Young People. Fellow Africans, as you know that uh, Zimbabwe attained its independence four decades ago. And I want to take this opportunity to remind you, fellow Zimbabweans and Africans, that the liberation struggle in this country was centered around two critical issues. The issue of the land, which is access to the land and the economy for a disenfranchised black people. And second issue, which was center and central in the liberation struggle was the question of one man, one vote. Fellow Zimbabweans, the liberation struggle was about ensuring that the black men in our people shaped the country has access to that right to choose leaders of their choice as a pathway to shape the collective destiny for different generations, including our own generation. This right, fellow Zimbabweans, was realized after the ushering in of a democratic breakthrough due after the lifting of the Union Jack. This right has been exercised in Zimbabwe in every five years, as codified in the new Zimbabwean constitution in Section 3 as universal suffrage and a key fundamental value of what defines a Zimbabwean citizen. The laws of this country. Fellow Zimbabweans, the democratic movement as was formed a few days ago as a clear objective to attain political power, govern differently and transform the concrete lives of our people. Today's space, fellow Zimbabweans, it's about the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission voter registration program, whose intention is to ensure that every Zimbabwe who is not a registered voter is registered to vote. Today, we are going to have a conversation as Zimbabweans and Africans on the importance of this right to vote. There are key questions among us different citizens across the entire country. The question is, why should people register to vote? Why is it important for young people between the ages of 18 to 35 to register as voters? The debate at this particular juncture, fellow Zimbabweans, is not about who do we vote for. The question is, why should we vote? There are different researches, fellow Africans, as you know, that have revealed how much young people constitute in terms of the demographic distribution in our country. 67% of the demographic, different demographic groups of the population in this, in this country are young people between the ages of 18 and 35. It is in that background, fellow Zimbabweans, that we today, the alternative movement, have decided to host this particular space with the intention to learn from young people, with the intention to hear from young people, with the intention to call out to young people for the first moral 
responsibility for young person in our country is to be a registered voter. So today we want to have a discussion as an alternative on why it is important to register as a voter. We are going to look at the challenges and opportunities that young people face. Just today we were in different parts of Harare as an alternative to monitor the activities of the commission, the traffic of different citizens, to make sure that people uh, turn out to register as voters. Key important figures is the distribution of registration centers in urban areas and in rural areas. We have noted with concern that the democratic alternative, the Citizens Coalition for Changes, led by Arvogen Nelson Chamisa, that the distribution of registration centers is a cause for concern. But with all these challenges, huge opportunities lie ahead. The opportunity to have young people to come out in huge numbers to register as voters, to have young people participating and airing their voice around the collective vision and future of our country. As I've said, 67% of the population in Zimbabwe are young people. The most important and generational call is how do we, as society, how do we, as a generation, how do we, as a citizenry, ensure that young people are registered as voters? It is in that background, fellow Zimbabweans, that we come today to host this particular space with the intention to make sure that we discuss and unpack the challenges and opportunities that lie ahead. I will start with giving you, fellow Africans, the reflections from today's voter registration program. Number one, the most important issue that we realize across the entire country is that people are willing to register as voters. Number two, we as an alternative government have realized the importance of access to documents as a prerequisite to ensure that people are registered as voters. So we are going to have a few remarks from the national spokesperson of the Democratic Alternative, whom I'm hosting uh, this space with Advocate Mayere, to say a few words to young people. We are also going to invite young people in the Democratic alternative, the Citizens Coalition for Change, to come and speak in terms of their experience, what they've discovered on the ground, what are the challenges, what are the opportunities that are emerging for young people to ensure that we register as voters. For us, in the citizens' movement, our target is to make sure that we have six million votes in the next election. That vote is de de defined and determined with the voter registration program that is uh, currently ongoing. Fellow Zimbabweans, fellow Africans, fellow citizens, without much ado, allow me to introduce the national spokesperson of the citizens' movement, Advocate Mahere, to give us a few remarks so that we begin our conversation for today. I thank you, Comrade Advocate. Thank you so much, um, Ostalos, and I just want to thank um, 
the team for hosting this evening's space. They're doing a fantastic job in the back room for comms, especially during this time of transition. Thank you so much. Tonight is a special evening which we reserved for the voices of young people. Uh, unfortunately, according to the UN guidelines, I no longer qualify um, as young, but I'm very young at heart. So I'm not going to say a lot um, because we really want to hear from the generation uh, of the moment to hear what their aspirations are, what some of the drawbacks um, they're facing around regis voter registration, and also just to hear uh, what their aspiration and expectations are as we enter this very important um, political season as we face the 2023 election. Now, I just wanted to say personally that, you know, I used to be that person who chose not to be involved in politics, to sit on the terraces, to be like, no, I just want to be a simple conservative lawyer. I don't want to rock the boat. But there came a time when, you know, life started to change for us in Zimbabwe. And this was really a consequence of bad governance, bad decisions. And I think it culminated um, in the, the decision to introduce bond notes, and this coincided with this flag. And we really had no option but to participate as citizens. And what I really want to encourage everyone is sometimes you feel like there's no space for you um, in the movement or no space, you're not the right kind of person to do politics. I've got news for you. You absolutely have space and there definitely is room. Uh, as as young people in approaching 2023, not only should we insist on registering to vote and voting, but we should also participate in a really big way. You know, as young people, we should be the ones putting our hands up to use our skills to be polling agents. We should be the ones volunteering to coordinate fundraising for a particular initiative. We should be the ones championing a strong volunteer program. We should be the ones pushing forward, you know, alternative policies. And there's so many interesting things going on in the world today, you know, talk about green energy, talk, talk about, you know, sustainability, talking about, you know, all sorts of things on the legal front. And, you know, there's so much space for young people to participate. So this is really a time where, as young people, we should not be saying, you know, what can Triple C or what can the movement do for me? Rather, we should be asking ourselves, what can I do for the movement? What can I pay as an investment um, uh, in my future um, and my, my wish for a brighter Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe? What can I do? How can I be, you know, I don't want to say be the change <laughs> because it's so be the change, but we really, if we want to start seeing change in our political space, we really have to act. We have to ask tough questions, we have to speak up, and we have to act. Change is not just going to come automatically uh, while we sit back and tweet, while we sit back in our houses and watch Netflix, or while we sit back and do absolutely nothing and share memes um, or TikToks. We really have to step up. And, you know, I just want to say that as citizens, we're doing okay, but I think we can definitely do more. We have to own the process. You know, don't let politicians of any nature run away with the political space. Always make sure that citizens are holding all politicians to account. Politicians like Mugabe don't just happen. They happen because citizens are apathetic. They're not participating. They're not playing their part. They're not voting. They're not asking the tough questions. So we really have have to start taking the citizens as an institution in a institution that's really there to hold all politicians accountable to vote and demand demand answers if someone is running for office ask them what is your plan for progress evaluate their sincerity of motive so when we say people should register to vote it's not registering to vote just as a box ticking exercise but it's the first mandatory step that every person must take uh, as part of their civic duty to participate and contribute to the greater good of their nation. So we really, really, really are encouraging everyone. I know the campaign is around registering to vote, which you should all do, but there is a larger conversation there around po political participation, whether you're a young woman, a young man, you know, a college student, 
ask yourself, what do I want for Zimbabwe? How can I contribute to that? How can I raise my voice in my demand for that? Uh, just so that we don't land back in the same spot in 2023 or even, you know, 10 years later, asking ourselves, you know, how do we re remove Zanupia? And that's the reality we're staring in the face if we don't step up to participate in our political processes, if we don't register to vote. And we have to go even beyond that. We have to make sure our siblings, our family members, if you know anyone who is turning 18, turning 19, turning 20, and would be a first-time voter, it literally is your obligation to say to that person, look, go and register to vote today, or let's go and take our, our, your ID. Let's go and make sure that you are registered because every vote counts. If we can make sure that every single household ensures that, you know, their first-time voter is registered to vote, that, that will go such a long way in ensuring that we we secure democratic change in 2023. And as the Citizens Coalition for Change, we've set a target of 6 million votes. This vote or, or this number is absolutely achievable. All it means is that, you know, if we had 2 million or 2.1 or 2.6 million in 2018, all it takes is for us to multiply each vote by three. So if I voted, then I find two. All each person needs to do is to find two first-time voters. You can't tell me that that's too much to ask of citizens. Each of us can make sure that we just register just two new people. That's all you have to do. And then we're good to go. And once we overwhelm the system, uh, they will have no chance. Once we over win by like a, a huge margin, it will be extremely difficult, if not impossible, for them to rig. The Zambian experience taught us that, and so has the experience in a few other countries where they've had electoral well practice. Now, just in closing, I want to say that we can see what the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission is trying to do. Even if you look at the format in which uh, they set out the voter registration centers and the way everything is jumbled up and the way, you know, certain constituencies have more seats because they think ZANA has a greater chance, then we can see exactly what it is they're playing at. But we have to be smarter. We have to be ahead of the game and the citizens say, look, it could take me a whole afternoon, but that's the investment I'm willing to make uh, to secure a brighter future. So please, uh, I implore every single citizen, every single young man, every single young woman, uh, even the grown folk, we also have a part to play. If you registered in 2018 or for the 2018 election, you don't have to vote this time. You don't have to register, I beg your pardon, this time round, but you do have an obligation to ensure that you find two new first-time voters. Um, as a party, as a movement, we're also doing our part to, to mobilize on the ground. I think every single uh, branch is has got an obligation to secure a set number of um, new registrants. But, you know, it's a task that behoves us all as citizens. It's our combined responsibility. Let's move away from that politics of sitting back and saying, you know, someone else is going to do it, whether it's President Chamisa or um, Job Sikala or Hopewell or someone else is going to do it. You have the responsibility. You are accountable uh, in as far as ensuring that we secure the bright future that we all aspire to. And when that new government comes, we will all have more jobs. We will all have an improved healthcare system. System. We'll all have a better education system. We'll all ensure that there's money in our pockets, money in our banks. We're able to save. We're able to get mortgages as young people. We're able to get opportunities. We're all able to have a country as Zimbabwe where there's freedom, fairness, and opportunity for all. So obviously, I'm a lawyer and a politician, so I could speak all night. Um, all that remains is for me to thank you all so much uh, for joining the space. And let's all speak out freely about our hopes, our aspirations around voter registration today. Make sure your voice is heard. Participating in the space in and of itself is a huge step. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about what we can all do differently. If you've got a demand, if you've got a contribution, if you've got an idea, please let's all hear it tonight. So thank you so, so much. And I really want to thank my deputy, Ostalos. He's doing fabulous work. Like he is fantastic to work with um, running around. So thank you so much, Ostalos, for hosting us this evening. And thank you very much, citizens. Let's do the heavy lifting necessary to ensure that we win Zimbabwe for change. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, the people's spokesperson, Advocate Mahere, for the eloquent and thoughtful submissions there. Uh, fellow Zimbabweans, Africans, I will not waste much of the time. As you know, that our job as communications department is to revolutionize the communication department.
Because communication is at the center of advancing the agenda of the National Democratic Project. Because our job is to articulate the issues, the language, the wishes and aspirations of the oppressed. Because at the center of the democratic project are the oppressed. Those are people, those are the people that breathe oxygen to the alternative. Those are the people that give the necessary vibe, the necessary oomph, the necessary revolutionary vigor and thought capacity for the alternative to be ready to govern. Fellow Zimbabweans, this is your space. Africans, we as a generation, we as an alternative government in waiting are organizing and preparing Zimbabwe towards the path of change and transformation with the sole objective as codified and defined in our founding values as is going to be communicated in our founding manifesto that at the center of our project is the goal to attain political power, govern differently, transform the concrete lives of the suffering masses of our people. Fellow Africans, fellow Zimbabweans, citizens of the world. The alternative movement is led by African Nelson Chamisa as an election department whose duty and constitutional obligation is to craft an election strategy and direction for a pathway of a democratic breakthrough in our motherland. The elections department has got rich people in the alternative, experts, from different sections of society who fit to the agenda of the alternative. That department, fellow Africans and Zimbabweans, you have heard in different press conferences about Councillor Ian Makon, our Secretary for Elections. You have heard about different members of the elections department, the Secretary General, the Spokesperson, Treasurer General, and other members of the alternative. But in that department, in that committee of the alternative, is the chairperson of the elections department. The question that is in the minds and hearts of young people is what is the alternative doing to ensure that we prepare for this blitz registration exercise? That is the first question. The second question is what are the guarantees that people have from the leadership of the citizens movement we have just been given the temporary mandate by people to be servants of the people in positions of authority with the intention to execute our revolution in a smoother and revolutionary manner. Allow me to introduce a man who hails from the kingdom, the central kingdom of St. Mary's, a man who was part and parcel of the youthful members of parliament when this country was moving towards democracy in early 2000s. The men who have stood and spoke truth to power, even if it was not fashionable to do so. They call him Ken Saruwiwa, Tagziza Aziz, Honorable Jobs Kalawa National, Vice Chairperson who has been given the mandate by the President, Advocate Nelson Chamisa, to come and articulate to you, fellow Africans, the direction that the citizens' movement is taking in regards to the Blitz voter registration program targeting the demographic dividend of those between the ages of 18 and 35 who have got the strength and capacity to change the balance of power in our country and bring the much needed democratic breakthrough in the next 2023 plebiscite. Honorable Job Zikala, National Chair, over to you, sir. Thank you very much, Ostalos, Deputy Spokesperson, and also the Deputy Secretary for Communications of our party. Thank you very much, uh, Advocate Fazai Mahere, for organizing this very important program for us to be able to communicate with the citizens on how we are moving forward as, a, as the uh, Yellow Brigade to make sure that all citizens of our country uh, take place and also have an opportunity for them to decide the future of their country in 2023. The most important thing that um, uh, the, the Deputy Secretary for Communications and Deputy Spokesperson uh, Ostalos uh, has put across is that what is the plan 
of our organization to make sure that uh, we register everybody who is very important uh, towards 2023 elections. What we must firstly understand is that I believe we have all heard what Advocate Mayer has said that uh, in the let's let's take just for example the two million people who voted for us, two point uh, six million people who voted. 18. May you reach that three. individual to make sure that this program becomes a success our program as an organization is that we are now putting ah oh, come on uh, network has been a challenge um Honorable uh, Job Scala, our national uh, vice chairperson. Uh, we hope um, you'll be back uh, in the department prepared the. Um, I, as a journalist, shouldn't be free. Oh, it's not free when there is no total freedom for ordinary people in Zimbabwe. These are people who have chosen to be needs. Keep quiet. That the uh, repression and the violence that was uh, thrown at many of you, um, Honorable Scala, Advocate Mahere, they've been thrown into prison. I've shared a prison cell with uh, Honorable Scala, and at a time when I was feeling low, he really energized me and many others who were political prisoners at the same time with him at Shikuru Bimbaksman Prison. So I'd like to thank you all for the great work. And I see a lot of uh, faces uh, of people that have been subjected to repression, like a uh, youth leader, Netai Marola, and many others that have been intimidated but continue to fight for the liberation of our citizens, people like uh, Skilled Rebara, who's on this call. I would like to encourage the youth to go and register to vote. There is no alternative uh, except voting. There is not going to be anything else that will deliver change to this country except voting. Anything else that might happen will have been triggered by voting. So we need to go out there and register to vote. I've seen a lot of people asking what is Triple C doing in energizing uh, citizens that is a very important question, but an even better question is to say, what are citizens doing to make sure that everyone gets registered? We all come from families. We live with young people in our homes. I've made sure that all the young people that stay uh, with me uh, have been registered to vote. Um, today, I met a young person uh, who was serving me in a bank. And I told her that I want her to make sure that she puts together a group of 20 people. Um, she said they will wait for me in Alex Park, and I was joking with them that I will inform your, your future MP advocate, Mahere, that I'm coming to your space, uh, I'm coming to your area, and I'm going to get these young people, 20 of them, to go and register to vote. That is what we should all be doing especially the adults, we have a huge responsibility on our shoulders 
to make sure that the young people in our spaces, the young people in our homes, uh, whether it's in the village or whether it's in the city, they've gone to register and vote. We were also mentored when we were young people. We didn't know at times the importance of politics until we realized that if you don't do politics, politics will do you. There is nothing in this country that is not political. The roads are potholed, it's political. There's no health care for the majority of our people, it's political. Our seniors do not have pensions, it's political. It was looted by ZANU-PF elites. We do not have uh, access to clean drinking water. That's all political stuff. So there's nobody in their right sense uh, or senses who will say that they don't do politics because politics is part of your everyday living. Um, I want to uh, tell young people that in 2013, 21 out of every 100 people who were eligible to vote actually voted. That's 21% and that's terrible. It allows ZANU-PF to rig. I've heard people say that, oh, but they are going to rig uh, even if we vote. That's a very wrong approach. The correct approach is to ask yourselves how they rig. They rig when there's voter apathy. That, those 21 people that voted in 2013, they did their civic duty. The 79 that did not participate actually gave a golden hand to ZANU-PF to rig. Because for every um, uh, 21 people that voted, ZANU-PF had 79 ballots that it could stuff, that it could play around with in terms of numbers. When we say stuffing ballot, it's not just literally stuffing the ballot boxes. It means that they can change the numbers, they can play around with the numbers because uh, a big chunk, in this case, 79% had not actually turned up to vote, although they were eligible. Some of them had not even bothered to register to vote. So if ZANU-PF comes back in 2023 as the ruling party, we will have ourselves to blame. Uh, we can't blame anybody. We have the tools at our disposal to simply go and vote. If you do not know where uh, your your voter registration station is, ask. We are always on, on Twitter, we are on Facebook, we are on Instagram. Ask us and we will assist you. I plead once more with the youth. Your future is in your hands. This country can change tomorrow and change like the difference of day and light, but it can only change if we go and register to vote and make sure that we vote and make sure that we defend our vote. Uh, if you were to ask Zambians who delivered change, uh, they will tell you that there was a lot of work that was done in registering people. There was a lot of political consciousness that was infused in young people to make sure that the go and register to vote. Zambians were waking up at uh, 12 midnight to go and wait in the queues. But you can't go and wait in a queue if you're not registered to vote. So the first place, uh, the first uh, step to take is to go and register to vote. Tell your friends, tell your peers, tell your cousins, tell your nephews that the only way they can have a better future is to register and go to vote. Somebody who is 60 years old today, or let's put it at 65, somebody who's 65 years old today uh, had an opportunity to go and take part in politics by merely voting. If they didn't, today they do not have a pension. If they didn't, today their grandkids are out of out of school and they don't have jobs. So it's incumbent on you understanding that the decision you're making today to register to vote is an investment for your future 40 years from now. If you don't make that deposit, if you don't go to register to vote, registering to vote is the equivalent of depositing money as a life uh, uh, assurance for your future. So you really have to go and mobilize people in your communities and make sure that they register to vote. When people like advocate um, Fadzai Mahere, who are our leaders, people like uh, uh, Vice Chair Job Scala, people like uh, Vice National Spokesperson uh, Comrade Ostalos, and many other leaders are tweeting stuff 
please retweet it. It's important for you to retweet this stuff because it gives it a wider visibility, a, a wide angle for people to actually see what's being said. Don't just read and, and, and uh, move on. Retweet. Don't just like. We don't want your likes because your likes don't deliver anything. We want retweet so that other people can go and look on your timelines and they will read and they will understand and 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 those retweets are a, a, an instrument or a tool of uh, registering announcements that ordinarily other people would not have known of about if you had not retweeted so i repeat again please retweet all the key messages when the citizens uh, uh coalition for change uh, post on their Twitter handle or Facebook or Instagram uh, accounts uh, anything to do with voting, anything to do with fundraising, please retweet it. We want to see those retweets in their thousands so that we know that we are getting ready for 2023. ZANU-PF has got a big war chest because they are using taxpayers' money. Monzora has got a big war chest because he's using taxpayers' money. The Citizens Coalition for Change does not have money. The money will come from the citizens themselves. You've got to invest in your future. You've got to invest to make sure that you get liberated, you get access to jobs, you get access to good schools, you get access to good health, you drive your little cars on good roads. You are able to live a normal life. That normal life can only come if we do the things that we need to do as citizens, if we play our part, let's not just wait for Triple C to do everything for us. They depend on us. We are the roots, they are the tree that is growing in order to deliver us, us from corrupt rule. Everything that we suffer from today is caused by corrupt rule. The only way you can make sure that your sister, your wife, your mother can give birth in a normal and safe space is by making sure that you register to vote and you elect a government that is going to deliver services and not loot public funds. Thank you very much. And I would like to thank everyone who is attending this space. Uh, follow the leaders who are on this space. Retweet the stuff uh, that they tweet. I'm going to pin one of the fundraisers. Uh, please retweet that fundraiser. Make sure that as many people get to retweet it as well. Encourage either each other as young people to retweet stuff that really matter. Of course